Hey, I'm Paul Begay, ASD Systems Designer. We're really lucky today because I'm here in the great state of Colorado at Pinnock Family Farm. And we have a really cool decoupled aquaponic system that is in a converted turkey house. So we'll take a look at all that, but first I wanna talk about um, the three subsystems that make up this decoupled aquaponic system. Okay, so the first loop is that we're gonna talk about is gonna be our aquaculture loop. Okay, so we've got our old friend here, the Endurance 4000. We've got our automatic backwash, our trigger, all of our fun things here. This is a water pumped configuration. So we've got a water pump here in the back that is pumping the water through the filter and again the automatic pneumatic backwash and then we're going to come back over here in just a minute and we're going to look at all that great sludge that we we're able to capture and discharge into this bucket but let's go over here and take a look at the aquaculture portion so we've got two 300 gallon fish tanks and I'm gonna stand right over here. We've got some juvenile koi inside these tanks. And you can tell these guys are ready to eat because they're all hanging out here next to the window. So that's two 300 gallon tanks and a two cubic foot filter. And water looks nice and clear. Now let's take another look at the second part of the operation. So if we come over here, we'll take a look at, we've got two sump tanks here. We've got a aquaculture sump. So the two 300 gallon tanks, they gravity feed into this aquaculture sump. We've got a hydroponic sump here. We're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. The two six, uh, 300 gallon tanks gravity feed into this tank here. And this part right here is the second loop that we're going to discuss. Okay, so this step here, this is a mineralization step. And again, let's talk about the three parts of a decoupled system. We've got our aquaculture here. We've got our hydroponics which we'll talk about in a minute. And then we've got our mineralization, which is the solid waste that is generated from these aquaculture tanks that we're gonna capture in here. But this right here is such an important part of the whole system. Where do the plants get their nutrients? From here. So we actually take all the solid waste that is captured in the beads, discharged, from our sludge storage area here that we're gonna do in a second. And then we dump it right into this tank here. We're gonna take a closer look at the mineralization tank now. We aerate that vigorously. And then the nutrients are sent over to our hydroponic system. And then that's the third loop. So we can really manipulate temperature, pH, Anything that we want to do for our plants that we don't want to do for our fish, we can do that here. This water doesn't go back to the fish. Okay, here we are. This is part of the fun. Uh, we're running this RAS, or recirculating aquaculture system. And we've been, we know our beads have been working. They've been capturing this solid waste. And we know the filter's been backwashing because we hear it. And we know that it's shaking off the waste and we know that waste is being deposited here. So now I'm gonna open up this valve right here and I'm gonna see what comes out, okay? Take a look at that. 
So we say it's about 1 to 3% solids. I'd say this is somewhere around 1 to 2% solids by volume. But this is liquid gold. This is the stuff we want. This is what's going to grow our plants. So just like in land-based farming, this is a great fertilizer. So we want to be able to very cleanly capture this solid waste and then we're going to dump it right into this mineralization tank and then that process of breakdown that's going on in here all the time via vigorous aeration is going to continue. And then the cool part about the way this is plumbed up is that once I dump a little bit in, a little bit will bleed off to our plants for that third hydroponic loop. So I'm going to dump that in right now. My plants need all that, okay? So I'm just going to dump it in nice and easy. And there's my maintenance right there. So you could do this as little as once a week for a sludge drain. If you're under a heavy feed load per day, you can do it once a day. Now the filter is still going to be backwashing, but it's not going to be discharging solid waste unless I open this valve here. Okay? So here's where the magic of decoupled aquaponics really comes in. We're breaking this down. And the easiest and the nicest way to do it for our nose is to add vigorous aeration. What am I talking about? There's a smell when you strip oxygen out of uh, a decaying organic uh, filled water. So we want to make sure that we put a lot of oxygen in here. This room doesn't smell. This facility doesn't smell. A lot of people think, oh, well, there's a smell. There's a fish smell. It does not smell like anything in here. This mineralization step, we have to add vigorous aeration. You can get this from a regenerative blower, um, uh, linear air pumps, uh, depending on your volume here. Uh, but this is important. Uh, so we aerate vigorously, and then we go on to our next step here. Our next step here is going to be the sump tank for our hydroponic loop. And that hydroponic loop is where we get all of our green plants, uh, as long as they're supposed to be green, um, we get all of our fruiting and flowering crops, but that's all a completely separate system. So I want to reiterate, what I do here has no bearing on what I do here. So if I wanted to raise the temperature, lower the temperature, raise the pH, which I wouldn't want to do, lower the pH, I can maintain two distinct systems. Where are they connected? Our mineralization step right here. So stay tuned for more videos on this particular system to come. Thanks so much.